Hello folks and welcome back to Wanderer Watches. I'm Ben. Now in one of my last reviews, the Zin 556A, um, I did a subscriber giveaway competition and the watch I'm giving away is this Seamaster Spectre Homage from Corju. Of course it's an AliExpress special, but it's a nice watch. It looks pretty cool. And it does this thing with the rotor. Oh, can I get it spinning there? There we go. <laughs> so anyway, this is going to one uh, lucky subscriber uh, who told me what their favorite watch was in their collection currently. Now we've got a very, very basic draw here. I've put all the names on pieces of paper in a bowl and I'm gonna pick one out and that's the winner. So we'll do that straight away. So if you don't wanna watch the rest of the video, uh, you can get on with the rest of your life as it were. All right, so uh, after that then, I just thought I'd do a kind of a mini state of the collection and just look at the watches that came into the collection um, during 2020. This of course, I'll put it on before I send it. The, the Bonds NATO or the new Bonds NATO. There's an old Bond NATO and a new Bond NATO. The old Bond NATO I actually have on my Tudor BB58 here. This is the one that Sean Connery wore and it kind of morphed into this, but I think more so because when this was shown on telly, it was in black and white. And so it looked like this. So you couldn't see the green and red stripes. So this is it on the Bond NATO. And we'll do the draw now, and then we'll have a look at the watches that came in to my collection in 2020. See if I can get this fastened on here now. And there we go. Okay, so let's get the draw out of the way first. I wanted to do this YouTube live, but I can't at the moment. The channel is not eligible for it. So this is going to be it, right? I'm going to close my eyes. Swirly, swirly around we go. And uh, here we are. Okay. This is it. This is it. So no invigilators. So I'm trying to make this as fair as possible. And there is our winner. Dear Dean Spearbrecher or Spearbrecher. So I'll give you my email address, Dean. It's wonderofwatchesben at gmail.com. So contact me, send me your address and your postal code, and I'll post the Corju Seamaster Spectre. That's not bad. It's a cool, pretty cool watch. It has a ceramic bezel and it's got the domed sapphire crystal and all that, all those good things going on there. Of course, it has that really spinny movement. Uh, did I? Maybe I've spun it already, have I? I think I have. So it's unique insofar as it does this kind of thing. <laughs> but anyway, I think I've done that already. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so just a very quick look at the watches that came into the collection. Um, I'll start out with the Steinhardt. This is a beautiful watch. They've done a fantastic job here on the colors of the dial and the ceramic bezel. And to me, you know, it's as close a homage to a Hulk as you can get. The quality, the build quality and everything about this watch. The movement of the bezel, the stiffness of it, the sound of it. Uh, it's got an SW200 Salita movement. So a superb watch and close to the heart because, well, it's the first one I reviewed on the channel. Okay, so uh, this is in no particular order. I think one of the first ones that came in was this. This is the Seiko, uh, what's this one? SPB053. Yeah, like, this is a beautiful watch. Like. The quality of this just completely belies the price of it. Uh, it's absolutely my favorite blue watch. Um, I do have another one, a uh, uh, Seiko Paddy that came in a couple of years ago, but uh, this is super. I mean, the bezel looks black on that, but it's it constantly changing and out in daylight, it's, uh, it's a different color. And also you can see the indices on the bezel, they look white there, but out in daylight, they, um, they shift to gray, but stunning watch. Uh, this is the Seiko 62 Mass before they brought out the latest one. But I like this one. Uh, I think the indices, I've said it before, I just think they're more, uh, they're deeper. Um, the the metal used on the indices is just more dense than the new one. Um, and it's just a little bit more akin to the original 62 mass from 1965. Okay, what else have we got here then? Uh, let's look at this one. This is the uh, Timex Houdinki collaboration. Nice watch, got an Explorer uh, 2 Vibe. 
quartz watch as well so no need to set the time every time it comes out now when i did the the unbox on this i was slagging adrian from bark and jack for saying that the the bracelet here pulls the hair on the arm but it does it does it really does and you know, after a day wearing it you kind of want to get it off uh this one this is was a real sleeper for me i wasn't that impressed with it when i when i unboxed it to be honest with you i just thought it was a bit basic but it's really grown on me the quirkiness of it um the the ratio of the bezel to the watch i know it's a seiko it's a you know seiko 5 and they've all got similar proportions and dimensions but it really has grown i really like the way that the you know you got this full scratching on the bezel that's lovely and the way that the uh it's supposed to represent the Roy used doji uniform and the way the strap bleeds into the textured dial it's very cool it's just it's so quirky um, and also the indices they're not silver there's a kind of a they're kind of a gunmetal gray like they're coated in something but this one has really grown as so different to anything else that i have that um it's a real nice one to be able to take out okay what haven't we okay yeah uh don't have a chronograph or didn't have a chronograph until this one came in and i was looking at a few the seagull you know particular because they're great watches so affordable and fantastic column wheel movement in it um, but actually when it come, came to biting the bullet, uh, I just love vintage chronographs. Uh, this one is from Oreo, so not a well-known brand, but it is Swiss. It uses a Landron movement. Uh, anybody familiar with vintage chronographs be familiar with that movement. I can't remember the reference on it now. But the indices are, are rose gold with a black outline, and they shift between that. Well, you can see now on the 12 there, you know, you can see that gold color, but they shift between black uh, kind of grey and gold so it's a very versatile watch and um, very vintage styling the case on it is very you know reminiscent of watches of that era i think this one came from the 50s possibly even the 40s it's a big old watch for a vintage watch uh 38 mil uh, and looks really great okay now uh the big one so i turned 40 this year and normally i wouldn't be able to buy this uh, on my own this is kind of well it's a Tudor BB58 um, and I bought this in in the AD in Dublin Ireland let's see if we can get that old second hands moving there it's not going to happen is it I have to take it off and wind it but just a beautiful watch vintage um, obviously the reference BB58 harks back to the Tudors of 1958 which of course used rolex 6538 parts and brought in then third party movements but just everything about this watch i mean you just can't hear the winding action there and then the the crown action it's just so smooth screws into place it's just an absolutely beautiful watch wearing it on so <laughs> when sean connery died i kind of went on a, a 007 binge so that's why i have it on on this NATO strap here. Incredible watch, probably the best value watch on the market at the moment. So uh, that came into the collection in around May. I ordered it in March, but 2020 being the year it is and lockdown and all that, uh, it took a while to come to me. The, um, the AD uh, wears in Dublin, they really looked after me, but we had to do all our dealings via email, post and all that kind of thing. But they were brilliant um, I had to wait a little while for it but uh, super bought this one on the NATO and then the last watch that came in and this is becoming one of my favorite watches in my collection it's hard to do a review when you get a watch first like you really need to spend a bit of time with it I saw Bruce Williams talking about this recently and he's so right and one of the things that's really come to me with this watch is just how deep the black on the dial is and um, compared to other do I have any other blacks there so say the Tudor BV58, mm, can't really see it there, but I've held this beside other black watches in my collection and you know, the others look gray or even washed out compared to this. It's a really deep black and therefore it really highlights those big numerals and the big hands on it. It's the most legible watch by far, just super. Uh, the case and the brace as well, really fantastic. I love the way this looks on the wrist. And it's a 38 mil watch as well. So it suits my dainty wrists very, very well. Look at that. Just lovely. Signed, 
absolutely love it. And it's kind of quelled my appetite for a Rolex Explorer. I would like a Rolex Explorer in the future, but uh, this will do. This will do for a long time. It's the 1st of December today. This has moved on to the 31st. Very remiss of me not to move it on a date. So anyway, that's it. Small little state of the collection. Watches that came in in this bizarre year that's 2020. But look, I guess it hasn't been all bad for all of us, but you know, it's been a shocking year for, for many. And, and uh, you know, my thoughts go out to people who've, who've really suffered this year. So uh, look, thanks to everybody for subscribing to the channel. Um, thanks for all your support. I've really enjoyed it over the last four or five months. And to the lucky subscriber, Dean Spearbrecker, I hope you can read my writing, this watch is on its way to you. Good luck everyone, Ben.